What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Welcome to episode number 53 of the Ambitious Vet Show with U.S. Army veteran, transition coach, keynote speaker, and Shell Oil Company's military recruiter, Dylan Raymond. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet, where we believe if you desire more, you have to become more. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Combat veteran turned passion-driven entrepreneur. On this show, I dive into the trenches with today's top military veteran thought leaders and influencers who know what it takes to not only pay the bills after the military, but really make an impact. You're going to hear their stories, their failures, and golden grenades to empower you to execute what matters most to you in your life right now. Are you an ambitious vet three to six years out who desires more but doesn't know the first step towards becoming it? I mean, I'm talking about creating more opportunity out of the uniform that fulfills what matters most to you in your life. You see, one thing that I found back in 2016 when creating this entire tribe was stability was the number one thing that most, you know, ambitious vets that got out with a big vision but got met with big adversity right after that is how do I get food on the table? Right? Well, guys, free resources will definitely get you into that, 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 that first job, the first opportunity that's going to keep food on your table. And if you've gotten that, congratulations. Now, here's the thing. Most veterans don't even hit the stride of actually getting the stability that makes them happy first three to six years out. They're surviving life long term, leaning on their glory days of being a veteran. Trust me, I've been there, done that, interviewed hundreds of veterans. I know that's the case. Here's the thing. It doesn't have to be like that, right? Those of, there's going to be a few of you. Maybe it's you listening to this right now that, you know, you want to feel not only that you're putting food on the plate for your family and yourself, but you also want to feel fulfilled in what you're doing. If you're looking to gain sniper-like focus and what matters most to you in your life, or maybe just discover the landmines that are killing your progress on achieving that number one vision, that mission that you've always you know, desired in your heart that you want to do, guys, I want you that's listening to this right now, I want you to leverage our expertise, our resources, and our experience to narrow the gap in you becoming who you desire out of the uniform. I want you to click the link in the show notes below. Let's schedule a 30-minute call and let's give you your first aha moment of many that's going to get you out there and be living that life that you truly desire. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, this is Stephen, host of Knucklehead Podcast, and you're listening to the Ambitious Vet Podcast with Chris Hoffman. All right, Ambitious Vet. So first and foremost, I just want to welcome you to another episode of the Ambitious Vet Show. If it wasn't for you, this would not even matter right? We do this for you. So first and foremost, just thank you for listening in on episode number 53 already. And I'm excited to bring this one to you. Today's guest is going to be Dylan Raymond. Dylan is a military to civilian transition expert. He is bilingual and fluent in military and corporate speak. Dylan is a dynamic speaker, passionate coach, mentor, and consultant. He also serves as a military recruitment lead for a major petrochemical company. Dylan was recently highlighted in Stars and Stripes and on LinkedIn as an influencer and military advocate to follow. He's author of Rucksack to Briefcase, a military to civilian transition guide for service members and their families. Dylan is a certified professional in human resources and holds a a bachelor's degree in business administration from University of Maryland University College. Dylan has a distinguished 25 plus year army career, which includes two overseas combat deployments. He held two of the most challenging roles in the army, a drill sergeant and field recruiter in New York City during 9-11. He rose to the senior enlisted rank of master sergeant before his appointment to the rank of warrant officer in 2006. Dylan is the recipient of several leadership awards, which include General MacArthur Award, Reserve Officer, Outstanding Warrant Officer of the Year, Employer Support of the Guard, and Reserve Volunteer of the Year and Military Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal. Dylan is active in the military community and serves as a board member of Texas Military Forces Support Foundation. Dylan is the proud husband to Dr. Trinice Raymond and father to four lovely girls and papa to grandson, Jalen. Guys, you that are listening to this right now, I'm excited to bring this to you. He does not 
hold back from the golden grenades. I was taking notes and notes. And if you don't already have a pen and paper, if you're running, I would have your notepad app ready to take a pause to capture some great ideas here because he dives into his humble beginnings of New York City and how he worked his way out of that situation. Also talks about how arrogant he got out, you know, from a master sergeant position to becoming, you know, just getting out and being nobody. Um, talks about how he sharpened his saw to, cr- you know, create opportunity and get better and actually start creating momentum out of the uniform. Talks about his biggest failure and how getting out of the uniform is a double-edged sword and how you can be more proactive in achieving that. He also talks about how when you're out, how to, you know, not just go after seven doorways at once, but how do you as an ambitious vet that really wants to be successful quickly out of the uniform, how do you focus on that one door and uh, stick to that one door until you're successful, guys? This is action-packed, golden grenade central, guys. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the trenches with Dylan Raymond. Dylan Raymond. Dylan, are you there? I am. Thank you, Chris. Can you hear me? I can. Hear you loud and clear, brother. Welcome to the ambitious vet. It's an opportunity. It's, it's awesome to be here. Love the opportunity. Love what you're doing. Um, being able to share uh, that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to this community, um, especially for those that have uh, given their time, talent, and treasures, you know, to serve this nation. Yeah, for sure, brother. And we all appreciate you. So, brother, if you would just so graciously fill the gaps in that introduction and kind of let us know a little bit out of all these achievements and trophies and credibility that you've boosted who are you as a person man <laughs> well I, to tell you a little bit i mean um I, i'm really humbling to be where i'm at today you know born in the city new york city um second of oldest of uh six boys so very tough growing up in the inner city so i had an opportunity to get out of you know grew up in public housing six of us in a two-bedroom apartment uh, wow. so people look at what you've done today and not really know the work, the grind, the things that you had to do, because um, nobody gave us gave me anything. So uh, I had an opportunity to join the military. I was uh, 244 pounds, overweight. In fact, um, my name was Term Heavy D. Uh, you know, <laughs> and um, got in, and, and I said, "Well, let me try this thing out." Really did well, lost some weight, uh, kind of matriculated through um, the, the, the the army. You know, I started out as an optician, worked my way up. I was selected to be a drill sergeant recruiter. Uh, and uh, then I decided to cross over into the officer's rank, but I went as a warrant officer. Um, so retired as a chief warrant officer three. So I'm a, um, family first. You know, I love family, uh, four beautiful daughters and and uh, a little grandson. And just really uh, fortunate to be in a position to be able to give back, share. So that's me. Um, again, love collaborating, love leading, love learning. And then that's a little bit about me. Yeah. Love it, brother. I love it. And that, you know, what I love about it all is, and um, upon my apologies, one officer three, I know that was the rank I wanted to hit um, when I was in the Marine Corps. I wanted to get in the one officer, but I was just like, I, I was like four years in, I was just like, you know what, if I get out right now, I'm 24 years old. I mean, um, you know, I have four more years to screw it all up and get back into the Marine Corps. But now I'm 30 years old and I've, I've kind of figured some stuff out. So um, I'm happy there's guys like you that have the beginner's mind that, you know, led the troops, man, and, and, and got up to those ranks. And I'm sure you made a huge difference and you're continuing to make the difference. So I love I love who you are as a man, humble guy coming from grounded roots. Um, and I just, you know, that's some of the best stories, brother, that come in here. So tell us about your transition story, man. So when you were getting out of the army after, you know, 25 plus years of, of experience, how was that transition like at that stage of your career? Well, so I actually came off when I came off active duty, I was, uh, I was a master sergeant E8. So I actually transitioned and went into the reserves. Oh, um, got it. Got it. But um, so when I came off in 05, you know, probably had a little bit uh, of arrogance. You know, I was a, a drill sergeant, recruiter, had the badges on. So my expectation is, hey, they don't know who I am. And quite honestly, uh, prior to me getting off, I really thought I was going to have to change uh, my telephone number um, because I thought companies were going to be calling me, 
you know, trying to reach out, get in contact with me, but I got a rude awakening. Um, <laughs> nobody called. Now here I am, a master sergeant, a lot of years of experience. And I went to uh, this first networking event, uh, struggled, sat down and the guy asked me, hey, what do you want to do? If he would have spoke to me or saw my face, it was as if I had a tablespoon of peanut butter in my mouth, had no idea, you know, trying to communicate what I did. And I was like, yeah, it's on my resume, you know, but they want to know who you are because anybody can put words on the paper. Uh, so in that experience, it took me four months, four months of being unemployed and it hurt. I mean, it really attacked my confidence. My self-esteem was low. Mm. I mean, I, here I am fighting, you know, uh, leading out in the front, deploying, and I'm coming back to civilian sitting across the table from someone and they had no clue who I was. So I began to work on and sharpen my saw. And mind you, I was transitioning from New York City to Houston, Texas. So I was a transition inside of a transition. Yeah, so that's it. The struggle. It was yeah. a struggle. Yeah, I'm sure, man. You know, getting out and building new relationships in a brand new city, don't even know who Dylan is, all that could, you know, all that stuff. So I'm sure that that was a transition in itself. So, I mean, talk, you know, I talk a lot about sharpening the saw and like the programs that we provide and stuff like that. But, you know, that's like, that's a great concept. Everyone's just like sharpen that saw. But can you kind of touch on, you know, more concrete examples of how Dylan actually started sharpening? his soul to find out his purpose out of the uniform. Yeah. So um, after about a couple of weeks when I, it was real painful being unemployed, I had to humble myself. The one good thing that I had is I had that, I had to hustle and grind from New York city. Cause you had to you know, <laughs> be able to be ahead of the game and get on the grind. So I began to start looking at opportunities, networking, and just basically took what the military taught me. I created my mm. daily ap uh, uh, operations plans where I'm going to go out today. I'm going to meet three new people. I'm going to go to some type of networking event. And I made it purposeful. You know, yeah. then I realized I started getting good at it. I said, well, let me start applying for jobs. So I started getting offers. I said, wow, I must be getting better at what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and then finally, I had an offer to be a recruiter in an offshore drilling company. Had no clue about offshore. However, I did know about recruiting. I did know people. And I kind of sold myself on, hey, you give me the opportunity, I'll be able to reduce that learning curve. Mm. So that's what I did. And as I began to go around the country, I realized that it was just not me that was struggling. And I kind of ran from it. However, comma, I realized that somebody took the time to give me um, you know, to invest in me, I owe it to someone to be able to in invest in others if they're willing to put the work in. Yeah. Yeah. That was one thing, guys, if you're not already following Dylan on LinkedIn, I don't know what you're doing, but his tagline on the top of LinkedIn is, um, you know, give me 1%, I'll earn the rest of the 99%. And, uh, you know, this man gets out there, does the leg work, does the relationships. I mean, he just came back from the largest, um, job board conference in you know the world um what was it a couple couple weeks ago and um you guys yeah you guys can keep up with that on linkedin twitter and all that stuff but he's he's constantly providing golden grenades out there on video so i definitely encourage you guys to follow him connect with them for sure so Dylan, we talked about it a little bit, man, but you're sharpening your saw, you're building out all these opportunities, you're taking opportunities as they come and learning and, and building confidence. Now, let's dive in to what was your biggest failure and what did you learn from it, brother? So the biggest failure I would say is not preparing um, for, the, for transitioning. Um, quite honestly, I, because in the military, it could be a double-edged sword. They'll take care of everything. They pack up your housing, they move you, they tell you where you're going, but I didn't take it. I figured, oh, shucks. I took care of myself. You know, in the military, it's all about taking care of the team. And sometimes yeah. you forget about number one, which is the leader. And so I gave, gave, gave to at the end of the day, when I walked out of the base with my DD-214, I mean, not that I've never been in prison, but it's almost like walking out, oh, <laughs> what the hell do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Right. You know? um, so that was... Uh, that was a, a, a kind of a wake up call. But what I learned 
is in that process, because I depended on the military leaders to, to guide my career my entire life, that at some point I'm in the driver's seat. So I, I, I need to learn to drive my vehicle. I needed to know what course I was going on, what direction. If I didn't, if the, what are the alternate directions? You know, if I can't get there one way because of construction or obstacles, again, in the military, you get over, under, around those mm-hmm. obstacles. So I, I learned to, and then put the work in. You got to put the work in and then being able to do what you say you're going to do. You know, so that those are some of the keys that, because it hurt me, and I've been so I was successful in the military, then to come out and struggle, that really woke me up. And I felt like I failed my family to be unemployed, but I knew I had to pick up my, uh, tighten my, my bootstraps and, and continue the mission. I love it. I love it, man. That that just, you know, you're a very principle driven guy, um, very value driven, it seems like. And like, um, you just you guide your decision making and everything like that on a daily basis. And I think it sounds like you just utilize some of the intangibles from the military and started applying those and you just started building blocks. And eventually things started rocking and rolling. And then you know, I, I love I love hustlers, man. I love hustlers, man. I love I love people that just get out and do the work. They say good things, good things come to those who wait, but that's only the stuff left behind by those who hustle. Come on. <laughs> there is, there's the one line, but that's a golden grenade, my friend. Um, <laughs> So I would ask you, Dylan, um, what do you think the biggest struggle is? I mean, you've, you've, I mean, I was, I was looking it up and then um, even my assistant was looking it up. I mean, eight audio CDs that are, has been transcribed MP3 downloads, seven DVDs, anywhere from leveraging LinkedIn, managing expectations, working a job fair. Um, I mean, you got tons of content on your website, which I'll provide to everyone in the show notes of the podcast and even inside the Facebook group. I mean, no wonder why you're the transition expert, right? Um, but w- out of your word, as a transitioning expert, what do you think the the biggest challenge it is for a veteran to becoming more post military? Becoming what was that? Becoming just becoming more. Oh, okay, I, I think is um, they anticipate almost like when, I think when I was a drill sergeant, they they would anticipate the command. You know, uh, so this the last two days I literally had from eight a.m. In, in the morning back to back telephone interviews. And a lot of it, I ended up shifting to coaching the service members because they just didn't know where to start. Mm. And then I would I would use what they've learned in the military. I said, most jobs or most opportunities, you're gonna have 70 to 80% of the opportunity, the knowledge. Because if I dropped you out of the back of a Chinook in the middle of a desert, it's something within you, you're gonna set up, you hit the ground, you're gonna set up with where's the nearest town, Where's the nearest people? Let me set up my perimeter. Let me set up communication. So my thing is just teaching them. They always ask me, well, what are some of the most common areas that veterans uh, get started in? And I don't personally match me because, because you did infantry, I'm not gonna assume you don't stay in security, you know, cause you can be a salesperson. There's so many other things that you can do. So I like to get, what is your idea of what you wanna do? And then I can partner with you and kind of coach and facilitate that. But I want to not lead you. I want to be able to coach you and partner with you. So the biggest thing is just, and that's the, the million dollar question. And that's the first question I typically ask. What is it that you want to do? And most service members are going to give you seven things. Well, I want to do this, 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 and that. And I say, okay, great. Let's put those seven things on some doorways behind you. I want you to run at them and hit all of them. Go hit See if you can run in all seven at one time. You need to pick one and we can focus on the others. Come on. Love it. Love it. Ambitious Vessels, you guys are watching us live or just on the podcast later. Um, think about it. Where in life are you focused on seven doors that you're trying to run through right now? And when all you need to do is run through one, one that's going to push the biggest rock in your life, which we all know what it is. Most of the time we're hiding that one in the closet, but find that one door that you want to drive through and just drive through that one and figure out what comes up, what other resources, connections or whatever comes through just running through that one door. And I think you'll be surprised what comes after that. So that's awesome. So um, Dylan, I mean, one thing I read in one of your LinkedIn you know, blog posts from 2018 is why are free resources, you know, 
ultimately not the answer to empower veterans long term. Like what, what was the idea behind that? And kind of just put some more thought around why you wrote that article. You know, a couple of things, um, you know, free, again, even those that when we, when we raised our right hand and accepted the challenge to, to serve in the military, I mean, our life, we, we gave up, willing to give our life, you know, um, pay the ultimate sacrifice, but free, just like if you give a person a fish, they're only going to eat for a day. If you show them how to fish, they'll eat whenever they're hungry. You know, and what I've seen is so many, it's so noisy in the military community. You got people say, hey, come and do this free, free, free resource. Tons of free resources. Yeah. Free so, so then you got these people that got all these certifications that mean, it may mean something, but is it valuable? Is it adding mm -hmm. anything to your bottom line? And what you, I, I see the biggest one is project management. I mean, everything you do in the military is a project. You know, do you yeah. need to get a project, yeah. manage, cert, project management certification? And what I've seen is a lot of service, I mean, we've put on events, you get 90 people registered. Now we got a budget for that. We have to plan for that. And then you have 45 people show up, mm. you know? So I use the analogy. <laughs> it's a, yeah. uh, a store I work that's in the neighborhood. It's called Aldi's. I mean, Aldi's have shopping carts. You can't get a shopping cart unless you put a quarter in it, right? And you don't go in there. You don't see a whole bunch of shopping carts uh, all over the place. They're neatly stacked because if you want your quarterback, you're going to stick, go back, take that shopping cart, connect it nicely, plug it in to get your quarterback, you know? And, and I always tell veterans, I said, why don't you go to Walmart, show your ID card and try to walk out with a banana? You know, you can't do it, you know, because if you have no skin in the game, it's no value. You have to invest mm -hmm. something just like trying to get a hotel, trying to rent a car. It's, it's more valuable if you put some sweat equity to it. If it's given to you, it's no value, but if you got to work for it, you'll see the value and the sweat equity. Yeah, for sure. And you put in the extra effort, right? Um, I, I see that across the board out here in San Diego. Um, a lot, a lot of, you know, free nonprofits, stuff like that, that are out there providing great programs, stuff like that. But, you know, when you go into the actual workshops or the programs, there's like one or two veterans actually sitting inside of them. But if you go to the website or whatever, there's, they're promoting it like it's sold out. So, you know, I, I love this and I, I just, I encourage veterans to just do your diligence, um, seek wise counsel from those that actually are positioned as experts like dial in here and all that. Um, and it leverages those resources, those tools and all that good stuff. So, um, you know, brother, I mean, tell us more about what you're doing right now, because you just went and spoke at the indeed, um, interactive conference and stuff like that. Like what's, what's this next mission that Dylan's honing in on and focusing on and, um, how, you know, tell us why and where, where you're going next. How can veterans kind of connect with you? Yeah. So my thing, uh, again, it, it's, it's pretty noisy out in the space. I get a lot of people sometimes I, I see the, 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 um, the threads on LinkedIn. It's like, Hey, go speak to these 50 people. Okay. And, and I even see my name in there. I always tell people if they come to me, I said, why don't you go to the other folks first? Cause if not, you're going to be confused. You're going to be running around chasing your tail. So I like to simplify, you know, uh, and my goal is to empower and educate frontline leaders that can also take that and duplicate it. Because my thing is I try to sip, don't look at this, that the, the civilian sector is different. I try to empower you to, to show what you've already learned. Let's take that and polish that. So now you'll be presented in such a way that uh, you're gonna be more valuable to an organization. My also thing is to target companies and organizations to be able to consult them as well and their leadership because you got a lot of, hey, I wanna do this. I'm gonna drag the logo and the banner around just to get on the veteran hiring bandwagon but it's not important to get people in the front door if you're not keeping them, you know? And you gotta sometimes, and me, in my conversations with veterans, I give them the heart, look, I think this is a little bit outside your reach. It may be a little bit below your uh, responsibility. I mean, if you're E7, I'm not gonna put you in a position that's E5. Um, if you're an O5, I'm not putting you in a position O1, you know? So my mission is to really look for those individuals or those individuals that are willing to do the 1%. Bring 1% to the game, 
and then let me coach, mentor you, point you and tell you where you need to go. That's your asthma, go, you know, mm -hmm. and then also be able to coach those organizations to do the well. So it was an honor to be able to sit on uh, the Indeed conference, you know, uh, the room was packed. People are hungry for the knowledge. How do we do this? How do we make this thing happen? And quite honestly, when companies say, hey, I want to start a military program, why? What is it about veterans that you're looking? What problem are you looking to solve? So go a little bit deeper than just get this person because they're a veteran and get to check the box type of exercise. Yeah, no, I love it. And um, what was like, what was like the general trends of that, you know, that conference, you know, what was, what was stuff that like, you know, most veterans should know that are listening to this or, you know, just tuning in live, like, what would it be? What would be like some practical knowledge that they need to be focusing on if they're posting the resume on Indeed or something like that, brother, what was some key components that you represented veterans and what would be some best practices you would uh, have veterans use to get ahead of the hiring process? Okay. So one of the things I do, I do a training uh, and I, I do the resume and I kind of flip it around and I have the veterans as hiring managers and mm -hmm. I'm the candidate. So I'll present, <laughs> I'll present a, a, a resume with a uh, veteran in italicized, underlined and bold to say that they're combat veteran. And then mm -hmm. I got a QR code and really have no meat on in, in the, uh, the resume, not to lean with that you're uh, a veteran first. You know, why don't you lean with your your qualifications and how you can add value to the organization? Oh, and by the way, you happen to be a veteran as well. Um, and then the other thing, um, you get a lot of uh, uh, veterans, you know, far as with resumes, 20, 30 formats. Why? You know, maybe two or three, you know, maybe a, a government resume, one or two civilian resumes, because if that was me, that's work. <laughs> to me, that's a full time job trying to figure out what resume you use and, and to apply for what um, what particular job. So, and one of the trends that we're seeing again is now our company's veteran ready, you know? So uh, veteran friendly, what does that mean? You know, nobody's going to tell a veteran, no, oh no, we don't hire veterans. Who's going to say that? <laughs> nobody's going to say that, <laughs> you know, but are you veteran ready? Are you ready? Do you have employee resources groups to support your veteran initiative? You know, what do you have in place to not only get that veteran, but to keep the veteran? Because if you keep that veteran, that, that veteran is going to tell some other people. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, what is a recent stat that was online that said over 65% of veterans are changing their career within two years? I mean, that's crazy, man. Um, <laughs> that's nuts. So, yeah, I appreciate you getting out there, spearheading it and representing our community and just helping helping companies understand how do you not only hire them, but retain them, which I think is something that is definitely a gap, right? So brother, I mean, um, you know, we have a tradition here as well. Three golden grenades, man. What are three golden grenades that you could throw in right here to blow up any ambitious that that's out there looking to become more, maybe just become more valuable in the marketplace, create more impact inside of their startup business, or maybe it just, I want to increase my quality of life. What would be some three gold grenades you drop into the tribe? Well, you know, and being in the military, I love love acronyms. Acronyms usually stick with you and, and can help you for the long haul. It's just easy for me to, to, to one, train it, and then two, to retain it. So um, I, I give one, and that's sports. Uh, we use sports. Um, I know in the Army, when you had a malfunction with your weapon, it was something that you immediately reaction, you know, slap up on the magazine and you did whatever you need to do to clear that, you yeah. know, to clear that, um, the, the, the jam. So I use the same uh, acronym for uh, service members. So number one, it would be start early, start early as soon as possible. And they want a basic training is not early enough. You know, it's, it's always to be able to think of your exiting plan because guess mm -hmm. what? You may go in, I'm going to do 20 years. I'm going to do 30. I'm going to be a general, colonel, admiral whatever, but what happens if something happened along the way? So you want to start early and start uh, your planning early. Number two, you can you want to plan and edit and you can improve on your plan. But the key is you got to work the plan, you know, work the plan um, because nobody's going to give you anything, <laughs> you know, work it. Number three, orient yourself, you know, identify where you at 
just like in map read. I use everything that the military has told, taught me. Identify where you're at, determine where you want to go, determine the azimuth, and then go, step, <laughs> do what you need oh. to do. Yeah. The other thing, this one that is difficult with most uh, service members is reaching out to others. And my motto is networking, you network or not work. Um, so you can reach out with civilians. <laughs> and just don't reach out with people that you're comfortable with in your squad. Reach out to people across the table that's different from you uh, that I learned that was my strength when I came into the civilian sector because you're going to have a diverse uh, a group of people that you're working with. And last two, think, T, think outside the box. And you're not limited to doing what you did in the military. You know, so think about a couple things. What do you like doing? What really gets you burns you up, what really bothers you? Because that may be what you're created to fix. You know, and that could be a great business opportunity, great niche for the business. And then the last thing, sell yourself. A lot of veterans fall short. Sell yourself on your military background, experience, and how it would add value to an organization. Because you're a complex problem solver. You'll mm. solve problems. And that's what you need to do. If you can identify what the problem is, take inventory of what's in your supply of what you've done, and then you fix that problem. So if I tell you, I got a headache, don't tell me, soak my feet. Give me a bare aspirin, you know, fix my problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely get to the source of the pain and then take action from there. You really, I'm gonna call the the, the title of this podcast, Do the Work by <laughs> Dylan Raymond. Just All do right. the work and uh, pivot along the way. I love it. I love it. Love it. Thank you for those golden grenades. Um, Dylan, where can people go to connect with you, man? Where can they go to get that, that book that you, that you have and you've worked your butt off to, you know, obviously do the work and pro publish and get it out there. How can they get it, you know, hands on some DVDs or content or whatever, where can they go to connect with Dylan Raymond? Okay, great. Well, number one, I'm on all of the, um, well, most of it, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I have a website, uh, dylaneraymond.com. In fact, I'm doing a, some rework on that. It's uh, www.dylan, D-Y-L-A-N-E, Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N-D.com. That's dylaneraymond.com. And I just refreshed the book. So this is the second edition of the book. Um, and the, nice. what I did actually went through from cover to cover, um, just updated, took out stuff, put some new stuff in it. But I added a bonus chapter that my wife, Dr. Trinice West Raymond, she did it from a perspective of a spouse. What is mm -hmm. it like for a spouse going through the transition? And then you can pick that up at um, sbit.ly forward slash rucksack, R-U-C-K, S-A-C-K, uh, briefcase rucksack to briefcase so that's uh bit.ly forward slash rucksack r-u-c-k s-a-c-k update rucksack update and love for you to connect with me um especially on linkedin i live on linkedin people try to get me to leave linkedin but it's 500 million people on the platform i'm going to cast my line why would i go anywhere else i mean people are there <laughs> everybody i need Anybody need me, I'm available. And I, I'm usually responsive. If you if you reach out to me, I'm gonna get back to you uh, 24. My usually I like to do a 24 to 48 hours. Uh, so if it's 72 hours, then you need to send me another note. And I'm either traveling or something's going on. Yeah, I got it. Ambitious Vets, definitely take action on Dylan Raymond's um, offer. I mean, this man has done the work. You've heard the trend across this, this conversation and, I, and you're gonna be hearing it on the podcast but he does the work. He gets out there, gains the knowledge, gains the resources and gets out there and does the work, figures it out, learns from it, pivots and continues to push forward towards that mission. I couldn't say it better myself. And then he even went back and, you know, documented all of his work, right? You talk about hustle. Gary Vanderchuk's one of the most, you know, top thought leaders and just in the trenches, grinding, connecting, networking. And he always talks about document your life because they're making uh, you know, a day where your testimony, your test becomes a testimonial. Absolutely. And, um, you know, Dylan has done a great job of coming back and pull other ambitious vets up. So for that, brother, I just want to thank you for who you are for our community. And thanks for being on the Ambitious Vet Show. 
Great, great. I did, if it's okay, I, I'd like to um, make an offer to five vets out there. Uh, I'd love oh, to give, give um, what I'm going to do, um, I'd love to, a couple of vets that's out there listening, the first five individuals that uh, text me at uh, 832-301-5110. That's uh, 832-301-5110. And then I want you to put hashtag ask chief a s k c h i e f and i'm gonna i'm gonna send you an autographed copy of my book the first mm. five people that um because i think somebody's out there that may be listening may not want to ask a question and maybe a question is a good answer in this book so i'd love to do that to uh the first five veterans um and thank you for the opportunity to be able to offer that again that's 832-301-5110 i'm going to give you uh, five veterans, um, a copy of an autographed copy of my book. So again, you know. being able to give back to the community. Come on, Dylan. We appreciate that, brother. Any Anything that's going to bring wisdom into this tribe to help narrow the gap and their next mission in life, brother, we're all about that. So thanks for coming in and bringing your wisdom. Well, there you have it, Ambitious Fet. Episode number 53 of the Ambitious Fet Show with Dylan Raymond. Do us a favor over here, Ambitious Fet. If you found just one golden grenade, from this episode, go and share it. Go share it with your network. Go share it with any of your social media outlets that you have. Don't forget to tag me and Dylan Raymond inside that post so we know that we provided you with the golden grenade that is good enough for you to share it with your community, right? Because this is why we do this thing, right? It's all about the why the doing and having comes in your life. But guys, we want to know that for you who's listening to this as a listener, you're getting golden grenades if we see tags on this podcast which we're seeing we're seeing them and we love them and appreciate every single one of you guys that are doing that but if you're listening to this right now you got one golden grenade that was just like wow that was it i'm gonna go implement this tomorrow next week or next month if you're on vacation um i just want you to you know, my call to action to you is just get out there and share it with your tribe share it with a veteran that desires more but doesn't know the first step towards becoming more and you'll be surprised that as you continue to add value to your network your network will continue to to work for you so if you haven't already subscribe rate review the podcast feedback is what allows anything to improve in life and we want to improve right beside you so meet us in the middle and let's get better together sound good lastly we know that your warrior made to become passion driven utilize this one golden grenade you heard today and you'll find your life being more meaningful and impactful let's go get it